Go. All right, y'all, welcome to the first opening reading of the New Orleans Poetry Fest, our eighth year, 2023. Oh, we're back. We are back all day in the Healing Center. We are one of four rooms running now. Oh, I think we were the last room to get up and run in, but that's because we're live. So welcome to our live viewers at home. Uh, this is going to be a small press reading series. What we do usually during the festival is we have... Uh, all of the poets kind of create the festival. They send in proposals and panels and roundtables. And then what we do is we do something called individual proposals, which are just individual poets who can just submit and say, I want to come read. And then we kind of group you all together in what we call small press readings, for lack of a better word. <laughs> I don't really like individual readers. Small press readings, we call it. Um, so basically, we just have a collection of poets. They're not really associated with a particular press. They're just associated with pressing and publishing and poetry in general. Um, so I think we have five readers, if everyone's in the house tonight. I challenge them to tell me who would like to read first. <laughs> Did anyone decide they would like to open? It's your job. I'll do it. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> yes? Michael Ruby? Michael Ruby, come open my poetry festival. Come on now. <laughs> Michael Ruby and I are trying to remember how long it's been since we, that's the game we play this year, right? It's like, how long since I've seen you? And it's not a pandemic thing, it's just like a poet thing. It's been like 15 years. Thanks for coming out, everybody, so early in the morning. Oh yeah, Lily. Here in the birthplace of jazz, I thought I'd start out with a few poems from a book I wrote 10 years ago called American Songbook, in which I took a free jazz approach to lyrics and 20th century uh, recordings, not all jazz. good friend the milkman for Fats Waller. My very good friend the Poobah, milkman and far-fetched explanation of our mantra, losing sleep masters, the hours to keep stochastic, a Swede should marry me. Hesitation my very good friend, mailman to our urges, empties his burdens. You should marry my monstrosity and push your cart against the walls of the moon where the rushes exasperate or predominate and all the objects mark the table with their light. A very friendly heather escapes the kennels, imploding the latest real estate news and salvaging the elastic blueprints damage the horses, parboil the cottages, country views preserve the Lent. My very good friends, long Laurentians, lopsided neighbors, little things for birds, I love you, soft tree, with thirst, marry me. Ah yes, olfactory sponges, merciful real estate, a new dress for the soft landing. My very good friends, long Laurentians, etc. Let the band play the shark bite. Fast forward, here comes the bride. Ha ha harmonics. Ha ha mom. <coughs> This next poem is, I'm a gambling woman for Memphis Mini. I'm a wristwatch, gambling cherry pie dough and stoops everywhere I go. I'm a silver orifice, gambling the easy off way. Tights, 
everywhere I go. Bleeding hearts, so much of money. Blue dice at the range. I've got soil and a glowing mojo. Boys, police the gates of horn. Yes, I've got tankards around a mojo. Boys, did I smell the semblance? The oil skin can't beat me. Petunias and all dongs, all roads through Georgia, siphon all ciphers, all telltale horning. Delegate so much dingbat. I start rusting the chrome mojo. Hot craps, all legion, that good and plenty money. Teach a monkey man the longest run. Ooh, God, please share your nose. Ooh, guys, please pelt the icebox with daisies. We 7-Eleven on sight. This mojo breaks my bear. This mojo waters. Now I'm going to read a totally different kind of surrealist poem from a new book coming out later this year from Station Hill Press called Close Your Eyes Visions, where I describe what I saw with my eyes closed. <laughs> Vision, July 9th, 2007. An old car slows down and parks at a corner. A man gets out and enters a candy store with a large window with, blue, with green wood trim and a Briar's ice cream sign. This might be a vision of a moment far in the past, a place I only went once or twice as a child on Tremont Avenue in East Orange, a few blocks east of the Veterans Hospital. Vision, August 4th, 2008. There's a man with a goatee, a few gray hairs among the stringy black hairs. A bicycle racer bearing down on me seems to have wings. All of them bearing down on me seem to have wings, man-made wings, not angel wings or bird wings. Sketchy beings, sketchy mountains, sketchy seaways. It's darker than usual. Electricity lights the sky and sea at night. A man has dressed up as a giant flower his face just a small point in the middle of a gigantic rose. How can his neck support so much weight? A gray horse's head against a blue night sky. The head evaporates. A cloud is lit by the moon and obscures. A flame shoots out the top of a volcano, out of someone's head, out of a cigarette lighter. The flame turns into a broad ray of light shining down. Two black phone lines cross below overhanging vines. An old car pulls into the place. A horseman rides into the place. A big black spider appears at night. When is it so dark we can't see a thing? A multicolored elk, a multicolored sheep, a glowing white mushroom enlarges and then shrinks. A bush in the middle of the forest has a milky glow. Ghostly, they are beings trying to get back, coming to an event at the top of the sky. I can't make out what or who they are. They're puffs, tufts, like transitory clouds. A horse, all caparison, heads toward me in a blonde light. The carriage heads toward me at a processional speed. This huge egg of light weighs the hemlock branches down to the ground. This huge egg of light, not the egg of a dinosaur, 
but the egg of a hill weighs down this corner of the house. The fish's open mouth is fluorescent. The pig's head, the horse's head, glow. The racers have green wings and a transparent bubble for a head. I could duck under their wings and avoid being run over. The small carved crash glows. The hippopotamus's lower jaw glows. The cow, cat, and owl glow. Silver liquid runs down the rocks near a narrow yellow house. Hills in the distance beyond the steep roof. I don't know where I am, and I don't know where I'm going. Vision, July 8, 2010. The most beautiful blue, yellow, and red. A large blue fish and a smaller yellow fish, which turns into a red fish. The blue fish disappears, and there's only the red fish. <laughs> Vision, July 29, 2012. There's an overstuffed brown couch against a darker brown wall, a small yellow window high up on the right. See, that is a painting, a brown couch against a brown wall, a small yellow window. That is a painting, the beginning of a whole oeuvre of paintings. These agreements tire us. Our agreements tire us. So they got him before they called him up. Those are inner voices. I'm not sure what I'm seeing right now in this pea soup atmosphere, but it makes me feel very sympathetic to someone there. Vision, July 10th, 2013. A yellow construction vehicle forced me to slow down on a country road. I swung around it on the left and back into the lane. It was right after that a blue sports car shot out from a little road on the right. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you so much, Michael. I haven't heard you read in so long. It's so lovely to hear you again. Uh, so I put on a taller mic up here, because everyone's taller than me. Uh, everyone here you read. Did you speak amongst yourselves and decide who would like to go second? And tell me your name. <laughs> I'm going to introduce you. My favorite part about the small press reading is I get to meet poets that I don't actually know. And so next up, I'm going to introduce Teresa Marita McGuire. Good morning, everybody. Since we were graciously given five extra minutes, I'm going to start with some poems I wrote at the beginning of the pandemic up until last month, and then I'll end with poems from my book. So it speaks poems about love. I think I wrote my first poem when I was about eight. I used to write birthday cards as little love poems to my family. I self-published my book of poetry in 2006, and I've been writing ever since. So I'm so honored to be here with you all, and hope you enjoy. And I feel my poems express love because I feel that's the greatest gift of God. <clears throat> Butterflies of love. Love floats in winds, blooms and roses, takes flights and butterflies and soars in clouds. Up there in the sky, appearing to wink, 
as we breathe in spring and exhale winter's rest. None at all. When I close my eyes, there'll be no regrets. Nobody's standing around saying they wish I had lived more, loved more. When I close my eyes, there'll be no looking back. Life held enough of that, watching love walk away with eyes wide open. This one reminded me of childhood, so I wrote it just a month, I was, a month ago. I walked and sort of reflect when I walk, and I was driving, I think, when I had a few thoughts, so I pinned them when I got home. I remember love. Love was in birthday cards, personal words, straight to the heart, refreshing ice cream cones of many colors, skillet popcorn drenched with butter. Love looked like pretty hair bows dancing for summer, Easter dresses made by mom. A bike ride steady by daddy's hands, catching frogs and flies in the sand. Love was in jumping rope and playing jacks, chasing butterflies and throwing them over our backs, flying kites and hopscotch in the streets and laughing, <laughs> playing hide and go seek. Love was swinging on the porch for hot summer days, games of red light, green lights, and what Simon says, making mud cakes of outdoor tea parties, sitting under shade trees, telling stories. Love was in family board games with snacks we made, tuna sandwiches and sipping Kool-Aid, baking peanut butter cookies, pecan pies, and chocolate cakes, picking peas and churning homemade custard into ice cream, no matter how long it takes, eating watermelon with a dash of salt, spitting seeds until we were caught. Love was in talking together as mama prepared meals, waiting for daddy to drive home after work on four wheels, eating together around the kitchen table, praying together because God is able, riding together to church, country, business, and grocery stores. Love was here and Jesus loves me. This I know, the love that was, still is. And now I'll end with a few from my book. Page 43, you touch my soul. <laughs> I didn't know it then, didn't even recognize it when. Your love made me smile and feel special all the while. All I know is that I loved you, and I could feel our love was real. So I tried to tell, sometimes wanted to yell, this is true, I love you, I do. But in my shy way, I just couldn't say, you made me whole because you touched my soul. Mm -hmm. Now I know true love does grow deep in the heart, even when lovers depart. Page 25. You are my blessing. God knew I need an ear, so he opened yours to me. You are my blessing. Swift to listen as I ramble on and on, on and on, on and on. God knew I need a hand, so he extended yours to me. You are my blessing ready to gently push when my courage fails. God knew I'd need a voice, so he sounded yours for mine. You are my blessing. God knew I'd need a shoulder to lean on when times are rough. You are my blessing. God gave you to me to remind me of his love. Page 23, a husband's gift. My gift didn't come with bows, ribbon, or lace. My gift came in a prettier package when I saw your face. Inside was everything I needed. I couldn't ask for more. My gift lasts a lifetime with someone I adore. My gift believes in me and supports my very being. She loves me unconditionally. Wedded bliss is what I'm seeing. My gift is for me only, sent to complete my life. My gift is a blessing from God. She's my wife. Page nine, you make me happy. Being with you is like a walk through jello. We wiggle through conflicts and stand. We slide over bumps and bounce back. Being with you is like taking a nap on a marshmallow. The softness of your hair, the sad sounds you sing. Being with you is like a carriage ride. We trot to the rhythm of each other's heart. Page 15, a look in your eyes. When I look in your eyes, I don't want to speak. I just want to be with you. When I look in your eyes, I see your fears and want to eliminate them for you. When I look in your eyes, I see my face and know that I am loved. 
When I look in your eyes, I imagine angels watching over us from above. Page 17, my heart beats for you. My heart beats for you like a boulder rolling down a hill, like the rush of Niagara Falls, like a raging bull. My heart beats for you, and I exhale, wishing you would respond. Just a couple more. Your smile. I bask in your smile of love. I shine before your precious sparkle. I blush from the cuteness of your grin. I laugh at the mischievous nature it lends. It is your smile that brightens my days. It is your smile that fortifies me. It is your smile that encourages my heart. It is your smile that tells me our love won't depart. You and I, there's a space within my heart that bears your name. Cultivated and tended, this love guard ignites a flame. Love pleads for a home deep within your soul. When you are ready, reserve room for me where love grows. Thank you all for your attention. Teresa, y'all, lots of love poems to start our Saturday morning. Look all squishy inside now. <laughs> Who wants to read next? I see y'all, you're giving it to the back and forth. Y'all keep doing the back and forth. And tell me your name, because I also don't know you personally as well. Uh, my name is Faith. Um, Faith Ellington. Please welcome Faith Ellington to the stage. It's nice to meet you, Faith. Thanks for coming to read for us. Through the mic. Okay. It's like coming through. Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Faith Ellington. I go to LSU. I'm very slowly getting my PhD <laughs> in English Lit and I write poetry on the side. Uh, the title of this poem is actually a URL, so I'm not quite sure how to read it out loud, but it's duckduckgo.com and the searches that have its word diction. Resisting lingerie, resisting chapstick, call from a burner, never a landline, too slow to disconnect. Splintered knuckles, doctor winds up until I can do it myself. Orange hospital, pill bottle glow, please don't give me fentanyl. Snow piles up, eerie January wasteland in a shoebox. Baby, what do you think this is? Smudge face, ruined mirror, reverse, edging towards hysteria, assisted upon, insisted on. Cool white light, bright pills under tongue, heartbeat muddies under sternum chest. Under 54th Street, Lamp lit, the sky amidst itself. Weatherman says it cannot be possible. Lake waves break frozen onto crackling sand. Okay, this poem is called Dead Bolt. Under sink basin, curl around pipes and reach, slide lock tumbler into place, undisturbed, taps wash hot and cold into porcelain cream, smooth hands through hair until flyaways lay straight. Stand up, let dread settle in fingertips, press into palms. Bracing against vulnerability, consider the faucet. Consider the cracking of skull into curve, firm metal, the force it would take to straighten up and slam skull again into faucet, spatter brain bits, and pop blood vessels again, again, crack dribble until quiet, and outside the locked bathroom door, no one home to unslump body from bathroom floor. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I feel like I have like a complete opposite vibe from the yeah. <laughs> watching that this morning. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, this one was called Zoot's 8 Point Star. I grew up in Pennsylvania Dutch country and hex signs you put on the signs of barns to help or actually help with um, crops and fertility and that sort of thing. Zoot's 8 Point Star. Hammer to pry nail out of side of shed, pry nail out of center of the hex. Sign of the eight point star, which stands for sun, rain, fertility. Hex sign watches over the shed and the flat yard and the house with its windows to watch sun and rain and children playing in the green yard. Eight point star, weather stained until gray, until cottontails under shed stop birthing litters. Grass knee high, devout girls pray for rain and when the yard is dry as a rattle, pry the hex off the shed and pray for a different guidance sign. Sorry, I don't have a printer, so I didn't print anything. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, this poem is called Hitchhiker Ghost. Sit right beside me and we are hitchhiker ghosts. State lines, speed limits blur as we tip into Indiana, Illinois, Midwest winter glittering harsh under gray sun. Under eyes violet, grip the steering wheel with wind chap knuckles and stare at the number on the house. Car heater dries out our mouth. There was nothing I could do to save you then, but now we turn the radio low, we have to make a decision. Lights on in the house, can either of us feel justified through cracked frost on the windshield? I used to sleep in a Walmart parking lot so I wouldn't have to deal with this shit. The snow sticks, time evaporates, winter pools at our feet. Baseball bat, slash tires, crowbar, bloody knuckles, revenge fantasy. House door opens and outside of us he smokes under the porch light. We sit side by side and stare at the end of the story we know. Turn the car around and go home. Okay. Um, this is Help and Closure Help, which is Lazarus in the Bible. His name, if you trace the roots back, means both help and enclosure. So, Help and Closure Help. Poor little Lazarus who had to die twice, who had to walk through that cold room and into the dark all over and over again. Twisted proportions of a second life, birthless, singular. What could he have asked of God instead? Synoptically unrooted, could never die. He relived and never breathed Lazarus. What breaks your heart? Okay. I got two more for you guys. Perhaps. <laughs> if I can find them. And that's a very long Google Doc that I'm trying to turn into a book. <laughs> okay, this poem is called Jenny Flecked. Incense rattle of smoke through another Russian Orthodox church, glimmering, gilded, and I kneel as I'm supposed to cross myself the right way, right to left. Slush of Russian words stand, but I keep to kneel. Eyes watch, painted and benign in immobility, saints, apostles. I cannot read Russian script. I can merely tell the bearded, weeping men apart as they stare at me in horror. Accusation. Ephesians, it is shameful to mention what the disobedient do in secret. And I drift to the way I was looked at by you, in Riga you wept, wrath. And in Riga I sat on the edge of our bed, still. Genesis, I know Abraham put down the knife. The knife stayed on the windowsill. Even I cannot confess what happened. Answer this, how did Isaac look at Abraham when it was over? How did I look at you? Horror, accusation, yes, even after I sat with you in our bed. Knife, kneeling, turn my gaze back to art ceilings, my mind to the priest amidst painted altars. What good is mercy if the hand still reached for the knife? I kneel or I sit, I cannot stand myself. Okay, last poem. Um, well, I find it. I wrote this poem for my older sister, and she just got engaged this week. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay, this poem is called Simulacrum. Right before you slam my head into the wall, you leave me and I go home. The summer blisters onward. My mother, my sister, and I stand on cool kitchen tiles barefoot, the screen straining in cicadas and hot air. I stand still, my sister making lemonade. My mother says, I'm so glad I raised children who would never stand for abuse. What she doesn't know won't kill her. My older sister calls me in the writing parking lot. I sit right down between the cracked white lines orange streetlights keep me from getting run over. She tells me what I already guessed. August and my older sister and I sleep on an air mattress. I say, if you marry him, I'm gonna cut off my pinky finger like that crazy lady we saw on TV, and I'm not kidding. Sometimes my sister looks at me and I wonder what she knows about me or has guessed. The basic question, what's going to happen to us? 
All year I become what I am not, and I chirp like a songbird. Don't touch me, don't touch me, don't touch me. Thank you, guys. Take the microphone, please. So much All right, is Michelle in the room? Michelle Awad, one of our readers. If not, I think somebody's gonna be closing. Ron Chambers, come up. Maybe even hand delivered. 
to think of it as documentation is to, take, is to mistake the sign of the thing for the thing itself. Thus, on the twelfth day it occurred to her that what was real could not be represented, only captured or recreated. Essentially, represent, representation was the representing of a stylistic artifice, meant to completely supplant the presentation of an artifact, and so it was necessary to begin anew. The form became the art in as much as the art contained the idea of art itself, the artifact at its own eternal synecdoche, the part that stands in for the whole. <clears throat> to ask what a chronica is is similar to asking, what is form? A chronica is both ligament and foundation that which simultaneously connects and exposes the fissures between connections. In short, the chronica is not so much a transcription as it is a construction, the language of true cohesion. Fuck it, it's Friday, let's get lit. John Mark. Oh. Um, chronica, the second line. The fact that I can't remember the German word for fear of a blank page makes me acutely aware of my own mortality as is the fact that it's certain my mental faculties will eventually, inevitably fade. Thus, ignore the shudder. <clears throat> Talk of my genius is at worst unsubstantiated and at best insubstantial. I mean, to paraphrase Everett's Ralph, a genius knows how to make a spreadsheet, or a grilled cheese sandwich, or a PowerPoint slide, or scrambled eggs, or prose that has like compelling characters, a recognizable theme, and a semblance of plot. <laughs> Then again, call me old-fashioned, but I believe Jung got it right of the standard of taste when, upon addressing aesthetic proclivities, he famously wrote, hate is gonna hate. <laughs> there are those I love despite myself. There are those I love despite myself. And then there are those who tend to always question my loyalty, so it must be said that the flag I fly is a fairly simple one. It's red with pride and green with envy, all sparkly white and gold, emblazoned with the phrase, go fuck yourself. <laughs> For I've seen the best minds of my generation eagerly take on the mantle and voice of a generation, only to then lose their own voice. And yet, because by now it should, it should have been obvious that an end yet was coming, all of the above might be better packaged in purpose if I simply subtitled it something like truisms from and for in the century. But, no, well, the most important word in the previous sentence is like. I gotta dance. I gotta dance. I gotta learn how to dance. Name on the mean streets of Negril, Ross Klopp. British banker name of German Lebanese descent, Ali Ali Oxenfree. Future name, Molly Percocet. Name that will be inevitably misconstrued, Spook. Name that's not as racist as it sounds, signifying monkey. Casey Blue's name, Dry Bones Johnson. Rebel fashionista name, Ray Kish. Kingston 1976 name, His Imperious Majesty, the Most High, Harry Eye, John Rastafari. And actually, a name that's somewhat apropos, the Black Swift. Because what they won't tell you is braggadocio was, was, was the one. Because what they won't tell you is braggadocio was the one Geppetto got right. It's so strange this mini moment that we live in. People learn to feel included, connected, touched, especially in terms of the art they consume. Tough shit. I don't want to fucking touch you. No more than I want you to fucking touch me physically or otherwise. The very thought of it makes me gag. Get your emotional and existential rocks off somewhere else. For the thing I got is cold-blooded, and it's coming from a brand new place. I'm dealing quick, and I don't miss a lick, and I bet I don't leave no trace. Check it out. It's autobiography, for those interested in the term, maybe, as if autobiography matters. Here, laid bare instead, it's autobiography without artifice, in the assemblage of the deepest recesses of my brain. As I've said before, pure, unadulterated me, to be sure, something like me. I mean, who can ever be absolutely certain? especially when it's indicative of a process only cognitive scientists would love. <clears throat> the name that looks within, solve exist. Harmonesque magnetic attitude name. Pop Pop, galactic empire name. Darth Swole, contemporary confessional poet name. Secretly emo, emo, the vinyl pusher. Charitable donor name, the most generous giver of zero fucks. Superhero name that every ex-girlfriend swears is true. Man child, super hot fire name. Jack of Jeans Chucker Man, AKA the man who shot Liberty Balance. Name that's totally fucked up and really, really needs help, y'all? Ronye. Art World Legend Name, Avex Abstracticus. And the name that gives reason to so much wordplay, the Canyon's Results. So then, what I'm trying to do here is explore, to map out the contours of liminal fictions and liminal space. The Chronica, if one asks, is a work that reveals the work, the thing that coheres instead of the thing that illustrates cohesion. 
Oh, Baltimore, ain't it hard just to live, said Poe. <laughs> and I'll stop there. Thank you very much. conclude our first small press reading, one of our opening events for New Orleans Poetry Fest. Thank you to all our poets for reading for us. Yes, you go ahead. I see you doing the can thing. Do it. Go ahead. Go. I know you want to do it, too. Give it to them. Give it to them. They're amazing. They're amazing. Faith Ellison, Teresa Marita McGuire, uh, Michael Ruby, of course, coming all the way down to see us in New Orleans. So happy you're here. And closing us out, Ron Shavers. Ron, Ron yeah. I'm going to call you that forever now. You should have said that on stage. Thank y'all so much for coming out. There's things all day. Grab a schedule. Go do something. Go in the book fair. If you readers that read today, I know y'all. some of y'all held up books. If you do have books to sell, Candace, our main bookseller, will consign books and sell them at our table for you. Just go meet her. She has a little thing that she fills out. She sells for you. And you can sell some books at the book fair. And audience members, if you want those books, go grab those poets. Get them to sign your books for you. Get some poetry books. Thanks, y'all.